from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, May the 15th, 2020. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reached an agreement last night with former Yamina member Rafi Peretz, bringing Peretz into the new government. Peretz led the Jewish Home Party, which was among the right-wing parties that had merged to form Yamina, led by Naftali Bennett. Peretz split from that alliance last night and will now serve in the emergency national unity government as Minister of Jerusalem Affairs and Heritage. Yamina will not be in the new government. The Prime Minister's office said Minister Peretz showed responsibility toward religious Zionism and will be a central partner in the government that will be established. As we reported to you, the new emergency government was supposed to be sworn in at Israel's Knesset last night, but was delayed, likely to this Sunday, over ministerial appointment issues. The U.S. State Department spokeswoman Morgan Ortegas held a briefing today with Israeli journalists addressing the issue of possible West Bank annexation, something Netanyahu has vowed he would pursue. According to the Jerusalem Post, Ortegas told reporters, we really think annexation should be part of a peace process where Palestinians should have a say. She said annexation should be part of the U.S. peace plan and is up to Israel, but stressed that it should be part of discussions between Israel and the Palestinians. A follow-up for you now on the car ramming incident that took place yesterday in the West Bank. Ynet reports that the IDF soldier who was seriously injured when a Palestinian driver deliberately drove into him had to have his leg amputated today. 20-year-old Shadi Ibrahim is from the Druze village of Sajur in northern Israel. According to his family, doctors say he is now stable, though still in serious condition. The conservative movement announced a ruling today that could allow for live streaming of Shabbat and holiday services during the coronavirus pandemic. There are a number of caveats in place to that exception, including that the equipment to stream should be set up in advance or a timer should be used so as to avoid the active use of electricity on those days. The ruling came in the form of a teshuvah or response from member of the Movement's Committee on Jewish Law and Standards, Rabbi Joshua Heller, who wrote, As a conservative movement, we value halakha, meaning Jewish law. And as a committee, we seek to provide guidance to rabbis and laypeople as to how to live lives strengthened and inspired by its observance. Heller stressed that the wider intrusion of technology into Shabbat and Yom Tov worship will require greater fences to preserve the sanctity of the day. He said, we hope that rabbis and communities will remain within the bounds of this guidance in full. President of the Rabbinical Assembly, the International Association of Conservative and Masorti Rabbis, Rabbi Stuart Vogel, said we are dealing with unprecedented challenges in providing the Jewish people with opportunities for communal prayer, celebrating life cycle events, and staying connected to Jewish life. The ruling, the leaders said, will be reassessed as the situation changes. An Israeli professor has developed a coronavirus test that gives results in less than one minute. The Jerusalem Post reports Ben-Gurion University of the Negev professor Gabi Sarusi's test has undergone clinical trials in coordination with Israel's Ministry of Defense on more than 120 Israelis, with a success rate of over 90 percent. Sarusi is validating the tests now, and trials are ongoing to see if it can tell the specific stage of infection that a person may be at. Israel's outgoing ambassador to the United Nations, Dani Danone, made some adjustments in light of the coronavirus pandemic. Israel was chosen this year to lead the UN's Science, Technology and Innovation Forum. That was, of course, canceled because of the pandemic. So Danone created a digital conference, which began yesterday and concluded today, where experts from across the globe spoke on the role of science, technology, and innovation in the age of the coronavirus. 
Danone said this initiative is widely supported by the United Nations, mainly because of groundbreaking Israeli innovation. And he said, I have no doubt that it will contribute to the global struggle against the coronavirus and further strengthen Israel's position within the U.N. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Friday, May the 15th. Kapalat Shabbat services are coming up at 5.20, followed by live Shabbat services from Central Synagogue. Then at 7.30, it's internationally acclaimed singer Neshama Karlbach in concert with a gospel choir led by Pastor Milton Van. At 8, author Anita Diamond speaks at the 92nd Street Y. At 9, it's the film Mama Drama. At 10.20, a replay of Kabbalat Shabbat. And coming up next, a look at this week's Torah portion. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, May the 15th, 2020. I'm Tisha Bader. Shabbat Shalom. Stay healthy. Stay well.